Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Nick or Nikolai. Uh, I'm very happy to be on this stage today because uh, last year uh, Christmas uh, Dev Club was first meetup in Tallinn. I've been participating uh, since I moved here and I'm very proud of this, my chance. Uh, this QR code uh, uh, is a link to this uh, presentation, so if someone wants to read it faster, you can scan it. Uh, this talk will be about uh, like evolution of infrastructure as code in generic company, uh, which steps can be, uh, in which steps it can be split uh, and uh, how to not uh, end the uh, your infrastructure in uh, big and unmaintainable uh, mess. Uh, someone can find this talk maybe obvious because uh, it is not really complicated and so on, but I think it can be useful in general. And this is the second slide usual about me. Uh, I am, came from system administration background. Uh, I was uh, uh, working in different companies until I joined uh, company Express 42. It's a DevOps uh, consulting company in Moscow. Uh, they are great guys and uh, i very grateful to, for them for uh, experience of uh, working there with uh, different companies and teams. Also, I'm an editor of DevOps Developer News. It's uh, news around Dev DevOps in Russian. Uh, we have about uh, 5,000 subscribers, and this is my best hobby so far. So, uh, I will not uh, be talking about uh, too much about what is infrastructure as code and which tool appeared in which year, because I think it's uh, every talk about infrastructure as code like consists of uh, Chef appeared in 29 and Ansible in 2011 or so, so far. Uh, so, I just will say that infrastructure as code is one of the key DevOps practices along with uh, continuous integration, continuous delivery. And uh, it can be described as a concept that repre represents modern way of uh, configuration, of managing infrastructure uh, with code. Uh, as you can see from this picture, uh, infrastructure as code is uh, uh, common part for different layers of application life cycle. From uh, very ground, like creating uh, virtual machines and uh, subnets and so on, to uh, configuring uh, different uh, platforms, uh, and it can be used in continuous delivery and application management. And uh, infrastructure as code doesn't uh, require you to use clouds uh, because uh, if you don't doesn't have it you just will not uh, be able to use it on base levels levels but it still but it still can be used uh, on another levels and uh, you can make advantage of this why infrastructure as code is important uh, as you may know, manual changes, changes are slow and uh, error prone. Uh, documentation of how to provision infrastructure can be outdated upon creation or even before. And uh, infrastructure as code allows you to provision new infrastructure and apply changes to different environments in a faster and uh, reliable way. You can repeat it with uh, and be sure that it will be the same every time, almost. And uh, another advantage of infrastructure as code is uh, self-documentation. So you don't need to describe every step you, you should do to create something. You can just uh, keep this in code and uh, your colleagues can uh, check it and uh, understand what is happening here. Uh, with uh, infrastructure as code, you can use the same uh, practices from development like uh, versioning, uh, so you can keep code in uh, Git, for example. Uh, you can use code review, uh, code reusing, and uh, 
decoupling of uh, code and the continuous integration, continuous delivery too. Uh, how we can imagine like evolution of infrastructure as code? Uh, this picture came first in my mind uh, and I decided to use it. Uh, on the left, we can see manual uh, configuration. Mm, so, and the, on the right, you, we can see a uh, good uh, example of uh, uh, like ideal state, which is not always uh, necessary and reachable. Uh, there are a lot of steps inside of this uh, path, which will be described later in this talk. And sometimes this evolution ends in <laughs> this pile. <laughs> Smiley face. <laughs> uh, and the bigger is team or uh, amount of teams in the company. And the, the complicated is infrastructure, uh, the more often this happens, unfortunately. But why does it bet? Uh, this picture looks funny, but in reality, uh, this uh, this leads to uh, you will have you will get mixed out and manual changes. Uh, you will have terrible collaboration in teams. Uh, you will get unmaintainable infrastructure code, so nobody will want to use it or make changes in there. And uh, different teams or even different people can create uh, competing solutions for the same problem because they don't want to, they don't like each other's code and they create the same again and again, like write-only code. So what we can do in, in this situation? Uh, these are 10 steps and this blue line shows uh, from the beginning to uh, eight step. Uh, these steps are, almost easy and can be applied and everywhere. Next one are slightly more complicated and uh, not always uh, needed. So the first step in uh, all this uh, evolution is start using infrastructure as code. Uh, unfortunately, many companies still don't use uh, uh, and provision uh, your, their infrastructure and uh, change, make changes in infrastructure manually, like uh, from clicking uh, in uh, AWS console, um, like creating uh, VMs, RDSs, and so on, to configuring hosts manually by SSHing to them one by one and changing files in, like in the editor. Uh, in this slide, there are a couple of most more most popular infrastructure as code tools, which tools that can you that can help you to create mm, to, to manage your infrastructure. Uh, these tools are can be different for different layers, and uh, Terraform usually is used to manage uh, base layer of uh, your infrastructure, like. Uh, subnets, uh, like from this picture I showed before, like for managing uh, pass, yes, and uh, so like base, base level. And Ansible is almost good for every other things. So if you want to start, you just can use the uh, first one, first ones, uh, without cloud formation. <laughs> okay, and uh, second step in this uh, path uh, should be, I think, should be uh, b check best practices. Uh, each tool from previous slide uh, has uh, best practices. And best practices, it's a good way to understand uh, which approach to use, how to organize your code, and uh, which uh, way this tool should be uh, applied, but I suggest not to concentrate too much on this thing because uh, best practices are more general and uh, in some cases they may, might be not so good. And uh, it is 
I think it's much better to begin to do something instead of like uh, create meetings and discuss for weeks like what uh, approach to use, which tool to use, and so on. And uh, I think that in uh, some cases, like uh, for example, Ansible best practices for managing infrastructure, and uh, if you want to deploy something with Ansible, it's a big, they have big difference because uh, for deploy, uh, you usually want to, for example, one playbook which consists, contains everything which is need, which consists of all operations that will be need, needed to deploy something. And, uh, yes. Uh, in my opinion, uh, actually, actually, uh, uh, in my opinion, Chef uh, create, uh, changed their license recently, and uh, this uh, leads to very bad uh, things. Like you cannot use it uh, anymore for free in uh, production, and uh, Puppet is kind of and. Uh, it's kind of getting better now, but it is still hard to use for beginners. So I think Ansible is still like uh, the most common thing. And uh, especially uh, the another thing is that uh, all these tools are not, uh, except for Terraform, all these tools are not so uh, important now in a way if you use uh, like containerization, Kubernetes, and all this stuff. Okay, mm, no problem. Okay, so and this slide, uh, these links contains uh, different links to best practices for different tools. You can check them uh, from slides if you want. And uh, this slide can be too obvious, but uh, many people still don't use uh, Git and uh, they can uh, create some Ansible playbooks, but they just uh, edit them locally and apply, or uh, edit them on Jump Host or Bastion and apply for them, for there. And they don't have uh, any history of their changes, and also if uh, there are more than one people in team, it is almost impossible to use this thing. And uh, there are a lot of uh, different uh, solutions for like GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, G Gitea. They are uh, paid and free, SaaS and on-prem, you can choose everything. Next thing is uh, merge request or pull request and code review. Uh, where there are more than one people in team, it's almost necessary to use this thing because it helps to improve maintainability of the code. Uh, this, this can help to share the knowledge of what is happening, what is changing, and uh, keep a consistent code style, and uh, potentially can find problems in code before they will be deployed and even tested. Next thing is uh, formatting. Uh, when you have all done all the previous steps, you can add uh, to continuous integration checks will, which will check that your code uh, is uh, okay with the style which is uh, your company uses. Mm. It can help you to keep your code the same uh, when different people can use different editors. They can like, someone can like uh, uh, tabs and uh, another person can like uh, spaces. And someone can like uh, one in indents in code. Another person can like another indents. And uh, if you will not check the formatting of your code, uh, you will get uh, different uh, styles of uh, this mess. 
And uh, I provided the examples of uh, for Terraform and uh, any YAML uh, tool, for example, Ansible. And uh, Terraform FMT is a Terraform function which checks and uh, if you need to auto format your code. And YAML lint is a YAML file checker. It can check YAML syntax, uh, fa fix, uh, no, found the, the, that events are the same and uh, can found duplicates and other problems in uh, generic, generic problems in YAML. Next thing that you can add in CI, it's linters. Uh, again, this sl slide contains uh, different examples for uh, linters for different uh, infrastructure as code tools. For example, TFLint is a linter for Terraform. It can check uh, generic problems in your Terraform code and uh, some AWS specific problems like uh, uh, you, if you select uh, wrong instance type uh, or uh, something else. Uh, it supports, uh, already supports uh, Terraform.12 uh, and, uh, and uh, Ansible Lint and Terraform are fast growing now. Uh, they became uh, very good tools from uh, pet projects of different people and now they very good, I think. And others uh, tools, it's uh, linters for Chef and Puppet. If you like use uh, any of them, you can use them too. And uh, why I was mentioning that Ansible Lint is getting better because uh, Cook Style and Food Critic from uh, Chef and, uh, ecosystem, they are, they were much better than Ansible tools, and they still better. But Ansible Lint is now in Ansible organization in GitHub, and uh, it finally becomes more useful than before. Next thing that you can add in CI, it's code validation. Uh, this uh, thing can help you to check uh, your syntax for common logic errors uh, like missing variables, uh, wrong names of some variables, or like missing something like if you uh, will have, have typo in Ansible module, uh, this uh, syntax check will help find it. Again, these examples are for Terraform, Ansible, and Puppet. And when you will done uh, Previous steps, you can add uh, all these checks to pre-commit hooks. Uh, this will help you to not spend, like to get faster feedback from uh, your commits. Like you, you will not be able to commit uh, code with problems in uh, Git. You will just get almost uh, instant feedback and we will not be able to, to commit pro code with problems because uh, all the previous checks are very light and you don't uh, spend like a min even minutes on these checks. Like it, it takes a couple of seconds to check everything. And uh, pre-commit is a framework for managing and maintaining multi-language pre-commit hooks. Uh, pre-commit Terraform is a set of uh, git hooks for Terraform with different uh, linters and documentation and uh, different checks for Terraform from Anton Babenko. And the uh, pre-commit is uh, also available for Ansible with Ansible lint. All these links are uh, going to documentation of these pro projects. And also you can set up uh, server-side hooks uh, and this will help you to uh, ensure that uh, Git uh, hooks are consistent and doesn't depend on dev environment of uh, developer. And uh, after all the previous steps, uh, you can add testing to your code. And uh, 
I believe that uh, in infrastructure code, there is no fancy uh, like testing py pyramid with uh, all these uh, layers of uh, unit tests, uh, infrastructure, uh, integration tests, and end-to-end uh, -end test, and so on. Uh, I think that mostly they can, this test can be named as integration tests, and uh, it's not really important because uh, there can be no test, tests at all in, uh, in this step. Uh, just successful end of these first two steps uh, can like prove that uh, test environment was created and your code was successfully finished and uh, from this step you can add the test that can like check uh, some functional of your environment like uh, they can check that uh, services are running uh, ports are listening or uh, that api is responding with some uh, predefined answer and the uh, tools on the left side uh, can help you with uh, that uh, mission. Uh, Test Kitchen is the most, I think, it's the most powerful and uh, uh, extendable solution. It initially, it was created for Chef, but uh, later it was, uh, there was, there were created a lot of uh, extensions for almost every uh, infrastructure as code tool. Uh, from uh, Terraform to Ansible and Puppet and SolStack. And the uh, biggest disadvantage of Test Kitchen is that uh, it is written in Ruby and uh, someone doesn't like it uh, and uh, because of that they prefer to use Ansible and uh, they don't like uh, Test Kitchen because it is like alien. And the molecular is a competitive solution from Ansible. Uh, it is written in uh, Python and use PyTest for testing. It is uh, growing in popularity now because it is uh, in Ansible. Uh, it is Ansible product now too because uh, it used to be like pet project too. And uh, TerraTest is a convenient way for you if you are already familiar with uh, Go programming in Go and you can use TerraTest for testing Terraform and Helm charts and I think something else too. <laughs> so after previous step you can use, uh, you can ensure that your code is kind of good and uh, doesn't break anything, not anything but doesn't break ev everything like in uh, like burn <laughs> till the end and uh, I think after that you can apply this code like automatically using any CI you like for example if you like merge your merge request and then this code can be applied automatically to like dev staging or pro even production environment yeah Uh, I think that the infrastructure, testing infrastructure code will help you firstly, if you even don't put it in CI, you just can use it uh, for local testing, like for local development. So instead of uh, having environment which is always broken, like you, you're testing on it, you just can, for example, create new virtual environment, uh, testing against it, develop this thing, and then you destroy it. And uh, you can skip the part with test, you can test uh, manually that something is working. But uh, this uh, solution where you, when you will have this one time thing which is, I think the biggest problem with infrastructure code is that if you have uh, environments that live long, you will not be able to test creating from the scratch and you will always miss something 
and then you forget this something. And when something will broke on like on production, like you will need to create a new application node, and you will you and you didn't do this for year, and you will get uh, a big so ton of surprise. Yeah, but these tests are not, you, you don't have coverage tests, for example. You, I, I met with guys from development uh, perspective and discussed with them this thing. And they have think in mind that uh, we need to like coverage in uh, infrastructure tests and so on and so on. Like we have unit tests, we have, uh, we'll, we will have unit tests, integration tests, end-to-end -end tests, and this is not really needed. So it's a good thing to have them in CI and so on, but uh, even if you at least have this thing like local environment which can be created from scratch in a couple of minutes, it's already a good thing. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you for asking. And uh, after, as I said, after you will ensure that your code is already quite good, you can think about how to apply it from NECI, when you merge, merge request and uh, it is applied. And the different, these different solutions are for different tools like Atlantis or Terraform Cloud for Terraform, Ansible Tower and AWX for uh, Ansible and Chef Server and Puppet Server. And Chef and Puppet can be easier because uh, they are, they have client server and architecture and they are intended for use uh, with auto apply code like so it may be easier for you so uh, in general it's not so hard looks not so hard and uh, these steps are not mandatory like uh, you don't need to uh, use all these 10 steps you just need to understand what is bad for you what is good for you and uh, stop where you want like if you will uh, use the first uh, eight steps it's already a good thing and uh, you can stop there and uh, a little bit more what can be uh, added to this uh, i suggest you to use a modern uh, editor like uh, the visual studio code Sublime, Atom, or Idea, what you, whatever you like, with uh, they all have plugins for uh, popular solutions, and uh, it's already much better than uh, use uh, like text generic text editor. Uh, also, a good thing is uh, that for several infrastructure score tools, there is a development kit. Uh, it is exists for <coughs> Chef and Puppet. Developer kit, uh, with developer kit, you can ensure that uh, the tools are you using are tested together. And uh, if your team members have the same version of development kit, you will have the same experience. Uh, if you use another tools, you just, I suggest you to just fix versions of <coughs> these tools, for example, all team members should have the same version of uh, Ansible or Ansible Lint or Terraform because uh, otherwise you will get into, prob into the problem more uh, faster or uh, sooner. Also, you can add to this CI pipelines uh, like static analysis. It's called, uh, it is exist for uh, Terraform and uh, these tools can uh, check your code for common errors like uh, open to public networks uh, uh, VPC or Elastic uh, ELB 
and so on. Like you can, and you can define your custom uh, rules. For example, that uh, we shouldn't uh, use uh, 000 as a subnet uh, mask. And you can, I was lying about unit tests. Unit tests can be added if you create custom code. For example, if you create the custom Ansible modulus, you can also add the Python unit test for them. It's a, and the same for Chef or Puppet and so on. Also, another good thing is to create templates for uh, things you often create. For example, you can have template for Ansible role or template for uh, Terraform module, which uh, will help you to create uh, the same structure for every new thing you will create, you will need to create. And another nice thing is uh, generate documentation from code. Uh, there are already solutions for Terraform and uh, Chef. Uh, so these things, solutions can generate uh, automatically README from your infrastructure code and uh, it will help you to like cons keep consistent this documentation so it will not be outdated. Okay. Do we have time? Yeah, we <laughs> do have time. Okay. Uh, so this is practically basically it. And uh, I will show a little demo about uh, how to apply it, it to Ansible. An example of Ansible. I will try to do it not so long. And uh, I will start with a, a simple solutions in Ansible, which um, firstly I will create. I actually already has uh, this. Uh, repository, but I think it's uh, a bit cheating to like, just show you what I already created. So I will create new repository infrastructures test two. I use uh, generic GitLab public and uh, I have folder projects. I will clone my new repository and will open it in Visual Studio Code. So, but now I will, a little bit cheating. I have already created five merge requests, like the first one is initial message structure. And I will just copy from them. I already broke. Ah, I can skip in history. Fuck. So, I just showed this one. I created 
an, a set of uh, Ansible playbooks and other configuration which will deploy a simple service which is called GoTTI. It's a thing which uh, create web terminal. Uh, so you just open URL in browser and you will get uh, like console access. Uh, it consists uh, of uh, like readme, uh, simple playbook. This playbook, I think I should like this one. Is it better? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is a simple Ansible playbook which is consists not only from with tasks, but also with handlers, with variables, and these tasks download the binary, put it in USR local bin, create config from template, and create system day unit, and start this service. Also there is a inventory, which is consists of one hosts, uh, which is created by Vagrant. And there is also template for system day unit and template for configuration. And there is also Ansible configuration file, which is described some basic options like uh, user to connect, uh, where is the private key, and uh, another basic options. So, I can create new virtual machine and apply this code and we'll get in a couple of minutes new up and running service. But as you can see, uh, this structure of this code is, uh, it is working, but uh, when this code will be growing, like if we add some another additional services, if we add additional environments, this uh, thing will be a little bit messy, like there will be like uh, 20 more files, and uh, it will be hard to understand which file is still used, and for what? Oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm sorry. Looks like we have... A demo in here. Yeah. A broken demo. <laughs> I think it will not help any. I just switch it to my phone. I don't really like molecular because uh, when you generate this uh, template with molecular in it or something, it's not repeatable way, like you get new molecular, you will get new template, and each of you, each new role when, when you create it, it will be different. And sometimes you need to patch these Docker files and so on. And uh, so, as you can see, in a minute, we already get up and running go to TI. And uh, when I try to open it, you can see that this is a top which is running uh, and show us the processes from virtual, created virtual, new, new cre newly created virtual machine. Is this running on your local host? Yeah. Okay. And uh, okay. we can simply ch change the variables in this uh, playbook. For example, we can change it to bash and allow you to write to this TTI and apply this playbook, and uh, in a couple of seconds you will get uh, 
restarted service and you will get like console, working console on this server. Then we can run this the same top, but now we can exit from this and uh, like run something else, whatever you want. So as I said, this structure is not really optimal and because of that there is a Ansible best practices and we can easily switch to another The next step we have this one. And as you can see, uh, the new structure looks much better because uh, we have separated environments. We have demo environment, but we can also create another folder with like staging or production so we can separate them. We have separate playbooks and these playbooks usually only run role. And uh, I moved a lot of this uh, stuff from single playbook to role. For example, we have separate defaults, we have separated handlers, and we have tasks and templates. And basically, if you just uh, run the same Ansible command, we will get the same result, but now we I will again have a top command running. running. So well, that's it. No, no, that that's it. But I mean, uh, you're, we already have a new in configuration applied uh, from new uh, structure. And uh, now we can add simple CI with uh, simple checks. So basically, all that was added here, it's uh, simple GitLab CI pipelines. Uh, I separated them to different stages, but they can be first free, can be on the same first step, but uh, for uh, visibility, I splitted them each, uh, I splitted them. And the first one is a check format. We just find uh, every YAML file here and run YAML lint uh, on this file. And we also use a unified config, which is like the same for uh, every CI we have. Next one, we will run Ansible lint. And uh, Next one is the uh, Ansible playbook with syntax validation. I will not commit n right now this uh, because it will take too long, but uh, yeah, this is, this is pipeline. And as, as you can see, you will, we have running linter, we have uh, code validation, and so on. And if, you, if we add, if we have some errors here, for example, I made a typo in an archive module. If I run Ansible playbook with syntax check,
I will get the error message about this and uh, and you will know that uh, there is an error even without applying this code to any environment. And the same with uh, YAML lint, for example, if we like if we like get crazy and go like this and uh, we will have uh, strange idents. <laughs> yeah, we don't have this. We'll get an error from YAML lint that uh, we have wrong identification. And the same with uh, Ansible lint, for example, if we will use like command module or something without the checking, we'll get this error. But also all these linters has uh, the ability of uh, overwrite these checks. And because of that, code review is important too because without the code review, uh, the person who don't like linters just can add comments and uh, ignore all this stuff. And uh, the next one, which is the last, I will show I will show this this one. So this is the state of this uh, example of demo with a kitchen config which describes uh, one vagrant uh, virtual machine with uh, inspect tests and uh, with uh, test suite for uh, demo environment. And uh, when we run kitchen test, it will automatically destroy any old environment, create new virtual machine, apply this code to this uh, newly created um, environment, and uh, test it with, uh, uh, with inspect. It will take about one minute, and uh, that's the end. Uh, by the way, tests are looks tests are looks like this. So in inspect, you just define in a special uh, domain-specific language some checks, and uh, for example, here we check that service named go TTI is uh, enabled and running, and that port is listening. I think we can wait it in background. It will take about a minute. So that's pretty it. Thank you very much. Nick, thank you so much. Uh, great talk. Uh, thank you. That's uh, to you. Socks. From <laughs> us. Yeah, socks. Thank you. All right, so uh, we don't have much time for questions, so fortunately, uh, Nikolai will be around for, for, for quite a bit, for cake at least, so you can ask uh, him questions in private. Now to the license giveaway, quickly. I would ask uh, uh, a volunteer, uh, a lady preferably, maybe, maybe you could uh, help me. <laughs> Out of this pile of uh, <coughs> tickets, may I ask you to, to pick two?